from combined arms to combined intelligence. Philosophy, Doctrine, and Operations. Module 2. By James J. Wirtz and John J. Rosenwasser. Every intelligence discipline has strengths and limitations. As a result, reliance on a single type of collection and analysis would at best only create a partial picture of an unfolding situation. At worst, reliance on one phenomenology could be subject to spoofing or manipulation by the target, or simply fail to contain the data needed to uncover activities of interest. During the Cold War, for example, Soviet intelligence officers valued state secrets obtained through espionage as the single most important type of evidence they could obtain about their opponents' activities. Information gained from open sources was given short shrift, while analysis was looked upon as virtually a meaningless opinion. But what happens when needed information is not contained in an opponent's secret communications? Under these circumstances, access to even the most secret communication channels will not yield positive results. The Soviets actually encountered this situation in the months leading up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. When the KGB was tasked to discover how President John F. Kennedy's administration would react to the placement of missiles in Cuba, their agents fanned out across Washington, D.C., hoping to pick up snippets of conversation. They were unsuccessful in their effort because Soviet activity in Cuba at the time had not yet been discovered by U.S. intelligence. American officials could not talk about a situation that they knew nothing about. By contrast, a scholarly study of the impact of domestic politics on the Kennedy administration's foreign policy stance might have highlighted the fact that the administration might have felt compelled to take a strong stand on the issue of Soviet activity in Cuba especially after the setback at the Bay of Pigs. The state of intelligence disciplines, as well as the relative strengths and weaknesses of their associated capabilities, varies over time. Changes in technology, the amount of resources devoted to a specific discipline, adversary countermeasures, and the nature of the target set alters estimates of the effectiveness of each intelligence discipline. In other words, analysis of the discipline's roles and contributions can hinge on the strategic and operational context confronting analysts. Each discipline, however, has been the focus of real intelligence coups and real intelligence disasters. Rarely does one offer a silver bullet that guarantees success. The Israelis, for instance, had gained access to the inner reaches of the Egyptian government on the eve of the Yom Kippur War, but the accurate information gleaned from this source still failed to stave off surprise. Understanding the inherent attributes, strengths, and weaknesses of each intelligence discipline provides a foundation for undertaking a more contextual analysis concerning how to integrate them according to a combined arms philosophy. Although experiments with balloons and cameras occurred during the American Civil War, imagery intelligence emerged during World War I with the combination of aircraft and photographic equipment. By World War II, aerial reconnaissance was used by all for identifying troop formations and industrial targets and for the conduct of battle damage assessment. In 1960, the United States went one step further when it sent a corona satellite into Earth orbit, thereby providing reconnaissance capabilities across vast portions of the Soviet Union. Today, satellites can provide high-resolution surveillance capabilities. Digital images are transferred to ground stations in near real time, although a constellation of satellites is needed to provide continuous coverage of a specific region. Other satellites provide real-time radar and infrared imagery to ground stations. Since the 1970s, for example, the U.S. Defense Support Program infrared satellite provided early warning of missile launch. Imagery analysis is easy for policymakers to understand and utilize. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words. Sometimes images are extraordinarily compelling, 
and provide concrete evidence of critical activities or major departures in national policy. Here the important role played by aerial reconnaissance during the Cuban Missile Crisis comes to mind. Imagery also can yield insight into a change in status in the operational readiness of an opponent's forces. The fact that satellites and reconnaissance aircraft can capture imagery at a distance is a significant positive attribute because personnel and equipment do not have to be placed in harm's way to achieve mission objectives. Imant, however, has several important limitations. The effects of weather or camouflage and evasion techniques can degrade satellite sensors and resulting images. If satellite coverage is not continuous, for instance, targets can limit their activities to times when overhead sensors are not in position to capture imagery. Additionally, not all pictures speak for themselves. Some require significant analytical effort to interpret the specific activities captured by the sensors. Activities occurring underground may also lie beyond the reach of overhead imagery. Although analysts can come to understand what is occurring underground or behind closed doors by monitoring life cycle activities occurring near suspect installations. Signals intelligence is a highly guarded form of collection and analysis that involves intercepting and monitoring electronic signals generated by various types of activity. One type of SIGINT is communications intelligence, whereby a target's communications are intercepted and read by analysts. Many means of electronic communication can be monitored by listening devices operating in space, in the air, on the ground, or even underneath the ocean. SIGINT collection also can involve clandestine penetration of denied territory and even specific facilities. During the Cold War, for instance, U.S. submarines reportedly tapped Soviet underwater cables to monitor classified communications. Even if intercepted communications resist decryption, traffic analysis can reveal important information about command structures, ongoing operations, or a change in the status of forces. In other words, communication patterns can often reveal much about an opponent's activities. Another type of SIGINT is electronic intelligence, which collects and analyzes various kinds of electronic emissions. Radars, for example, are of interest to analysts because it is important to know their locations, coverage zones, and operating patterns when it comes to planning air operations and countermeasures. Analysts are also interested in collecting telemetry about an opponent's military systems. Aircraft and missiles, especially when they are being tested, transmit information about their performance to ground stations. This type of telemetry is key to verifying arms control agreements and in terms of shedding light on fundamental weapons characteristics. The ability to eavesdrop on the conversations of others without them knowing is a priceless asset when it comes to intelligence production. It can offer insights into plans and intentions and provide enormous advantages to the side that can clandestinely monitor an opponent's communications. Allied breaking of German and Japanese codes, producing intelligence known by the code words ultra and magic, saved thousands of lives by appreciably shortening World War II. Signals can be detected from remote locations, which can eliminate the need to place personnel in harm's way to collect intelligence. Signals intelligence, however, presents several limitations. First, the amount and types of information that can be intercepted is virtually limitless, making it increasingly difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff when it comes to detecting important messages. The sheer mass of material that can be collected presents a problem for analysts. In 2005, for instance, the Federal Bureau of Investigation held 8,000 hours of counterterrorism wiretaps that were still waiting to be translated. Second, without context, it is difficult to understand the exact meaning of intercepted communications. In the three months preceding the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, U.S. intelligence analysts intercepted 30 conversations containing veiled references that a major attack, disaster, or incident was imminent. Third, someone has to understand what is being said in intercepted communications. The U.S. government for a time simply lacked analysts who could understand the languages spoken in Afghanistan. 
Fourth, relatively simple countermeasures, such as use of couriers, secure landlines, elaborate code languages, or simply staying off the grid, can curtail the effectiveness of modern collection techniques. These measures increase operating costs and can slow the tempo of operations, but for some opponents, speed is not a prerequisite for success. Measurement and signals intelligence is similar to signals intelligence. Electronic intelligence, for instance, is often characterized as massint. Infrared and optical sensors that generate data without imagery are also considered to be massint. Radar images also can be used to identify targets once their unique characteristics are cataloged. Seismic, acoustic, and magnetic sensors can be used to sample the environment, and materials sampling can be used to test effluent streams, debris, and exhaust plumes. Sensors also are configured to detect radiological, chemical, and biological hazards. More exotic types of sensors also are coming online. According to Jeff Richelson, quote, hyperspectral imagery employs at least 60 narrow contiguous spectral bands. The data produced by examining those bands allows analysts to detect an object's shape, density, temperature, movement, and chemical composition, close quote. Hyperspectral imagery might be put to use to identify the dyes used in an opponent's uniforms. Smart weapons could then be created that would hone onto those signatures. Massant thus appears to be similar to touch, taste, and smell, while imant resembles sight, and sigint is similar to hearing. Massant is useful when the location, timing, and nature of an unfolding event are known. Cueing is crucial in measurement and signatures intelligence. In other words, the right sensors need to be in the correct location to observe an unfolding event. Once Masson's sensors are in place, they can offer definitive information about an unfolding situation by helping to defeat denial and deception efforts geared toward traditional imminent and SIGINT capabilities. Masson suffers from several of the drawbacks inherent in other technical collection systems. For example, massant data can require a good deal of processing and analysis to discern meaningful information. As a result, policymakers do not readily understand raw massant data. In contrast to other technical collection capabilities, some massant sensors need to be brought into close proximity to the target. Sampling effluent streams or particles and exhaust gases often means that the sensors themselves have to be brought to the location of interest. If targets are aware of massant capabilities, they also can take steps to hide signals of interest. Human intelligence, which is gained through interpersonal contact conducted in secret, is known in the vernacular as espionage. In this classic formulation, espionage qua human usually involves cooperation of an official in an adversary's government who, for various reasons, is willing to betray the trust placed in them to compromise classified information. Espionage is a clandestine activity, in the sense that the side undertaking the espionage needs to maintain the secrecy of its operations. Human can take a variety of forms. Officials in their everyday interactions with foreign counterparts can gain insight into the intentions of other governments. Sometimes these representatives take a low-key approach when contacting foreign officials to avoid publicity and to keep their activities in other countries as quiet as possible. Officials stationed overseas, ambassadors, military attachés, representatives of various agencies, also report their observations. The intelligence community also undertakes a variety of debriefings of emigres, business executives, and subject matter experts to track development in foreign countries. Human can provide fundamental insights into an opponent's objectives, political setting, command and control procedures, and military doctrine. Sometimes agents hit the jackpot. Oleg Penkovsky, from his position inside Soviet military intelligence, for instance, literally turned over the operating manuals for the medium-range and intermediate-range ballistic missiles that the Soviets were deploying to Cuba in the fall of 1962, while informing the Kennedy administration that General Secretary Nikita Khrushchev faced significant domestic opposition to his Cuban gambit. 
Most of the time, however, Humant provides cueing. It provides indications that an opponent is undertaking some sort of initiative before that initiative is fully underway and begins to generate observable activities. Espionage allows intelligence managers to focus collection activities on the suspected activity. Of all the intelligence disciplines, human intelligence is probably the most idiosyncratic and unpredictable, although it probably is the most coveted by intelligence consumers because of its prominence in the culture of intelligence. For a human to succeed, it can take years to develop reliable and productive contacts within an opposing regime. Contacts also can have mixed motives when it comes to compromising information, and agents always have to be aware of the possibility that dangles or false leads are being offered. Double agents, which can take the form of reliable sources detected by their own side, also are another downside to human. Opposing governments can use double agents to feed misleading information into collection channels. In many parts of the world, Americans are no longer seen as the good guys, which makes it very difficult to operate in foreign societies and makes it less likely that individuals will turn over classified information out of ideological or political sympathy. The fact that many intelligence officers lack familiarity with emerging languages and cultures of importance makes it increasingly difficult to carry out human. Definitions of open source intelligence, the most recently formally recognized INT, are subject to debate. OSINT constitutes insight gleaned from publicly available information that anyone can access by overt, non-clandestine, or non-secret means to satisfy an intelligence requirement. Using this expansive definition, Information that is proprietary but acquired by legal means, for example, certain law enforcement or industry data, falls under the rubric of open source intelligence. More commonly, when scholars refer to OSINT, they generally are referring to various forms of publicly available media, television and newspapers, especially in foreign languages, web-based, user-generated content like wikis and blogs, public data, such as government reports, patent applications, and speeches, academic sources, like doctoral dissertations and conference proceedings, commercial data, such as private satellite imagery, and gray literature, such as research reports and working papers that were generally intended for limited distribution. Its acquisition may or may not be free, but in general terms, OSINT is far cheaper and carries much less operational risk than the other INTs, although it does require a fairly large number of people and time. But just because OSINT leverages publicly available information, however, does not mean that findings derived from this information will remain unclassified. In fact, some of the most penetrating insights based on open source information can be deeply classified because they can form the basis of foreign and defense policies. OSINT has historically been a stepchild within the intelligence community. Intelligence professionals have a cultural preference for information gleaned from secret sources. The intelligence community also seems to believe that their consumers prefer insights gained from sources that are not commonly available. It also is difficult to glean adversaries' specific strategic motivations or long-term intentions from open source data especially if the opponent practices a modicum of operational security. In addition, the unlimited volume of and variation in open source information poses questions about processing and exploitation capacity. In other words, how could anyone possibly identify all the appropriate sources for analysis, place the inputs gathered into a meaningful typology or framework, and decipher what was relevant, accurate, and useful? Nevertheless, OSINT has several unique attributes beyond its relative low cost compared to other intelligence disciplines. The large and public marketplace of open source information can correct false or misleading information by providing an endless number of sources to fill in even the most esoteric detail on almost every conceivable topic. OSINT provides context within which the other INTs can bring insight to bear and forms the basic framework and reference point for analysts to do their work. 
It also gives indispensable strategic warning through its broad coverage of leading economic, cultural, and political indicators. Most OSINT can be shared widely, from foreign partners to non-traditional partners like first responders, to provide a common starting point for further collaboration. OSINT's significance and the ease with which it could be leveraged have increased over the past 20 years for a number of reasons. First, the demise of Soviet communism, the singular focus of the intelligence community for 50 years, and proliferation of other threats spawn the need for a foundation of global coverage eminently suitable to OSINT. The other intelligence disciplines could not possibly provide the necessary coverage to meet the broad range of topics of policymaker interest, and often their specialized perspectives were not appropriate to the basic questions being asked by intelligence customers. Second, OSINT may be the best weapon to meet many 21st century threats that are less a function of high-tech weaponry guarded tightly by a regime's security forces and instead operate as social and political movements or self-organized interest groups that plan, communicate, and recruit their participants in open cyberspace. Third, the availability of a preponderance of open source information online has enabled greater access to a wider range of materials. Going to City Hall to look up tax records or real estate deeds, for instance, is an anachronism. Fourth, the problem of processing and exploitation continues to wane as new software and hardware becomes available that can identify, sort, and sift through structured and unstructured data with increasing speed at lower cost.